What made the Model T so special that Hollywood insisted in using it during the silent film era? Did Laurel and Hardy really help make the Model T a staple in movie making from the slapstick comedy silent movie era all the way into the first years of sound and motion pictures? Could they have influenced future slapstick comedians like The Three Stooges to use the automobile in their comedy short films later on? Let's take a look into the history of the Ford Model T and how eventually that car played just as much a role in these movies as Laurel and Hardy did. Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Ken Smith and this commentary film is about how the Model T appeared in filmmaking and how it eventually became a regular co-star with Laurel and Hardy. But before we get there, let's look at how the automobile in general first entered Hollywood and filmmaking. The very first car chase scene featured in a Hollywood movie was in the 1903 silent film titled Runaway Match or also known as Marriage by Motor. Though a little less enthralling than the CGI perfected car crashes that we have now in today's film, this little short film was pretty exciting for the times. This film had just a total of nine shots and was the first auto-centered narrative film. The plot of the film is basically about a couple who elope by car. The women's wealthy father gives chase but his limousine breaks down. When he arrives too late to prevent the marriage from happening, he becomes reconciled to his new son-in-law. Mark Sennett's Keystone Cops debuted in 1912 and was almost an overnight sensation with their chase scenes and hilarious slapstick comedy. Using multiple vehicles and chase scenes, there seemed to be a never-ending source of using these cop and car calamity encounters to create multitudes of non-stop laughter. But this was also short-lived. As early as 1914, Senate shifted the Keystone Cops from starring roles to background ensembles in support of comedians such as Charlie Chaplin and Fatty Arbuckle. Mac Senate continued to use the Keystone Cops intermittently through the 1920s, but their popularity had waned by the time the sound films arrived in 1927. On the other hand, the Model T was the it car of the 1920s. It was the best-selling vehicle at that time, and everyone in Hollywood and beyond wanted one. In part, the Model T's popularity on the big screen came because the car and the medium emerged at approximately the same time 100 years ago and both became very popular almost overnight. As the first movie makers moved beyond static interior shots to the outdoors, it was only natural to capture the motion and movement created by the automobile. In that way, Hollywood reflected the changes brought on by the automobile and mass migration to the cities. While the Ford Model T appears in the short films of such early Hollywood comedians like Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd, and Fatty Arbuckle, it was the laugh-out-loud lunacy of Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy that they were getting ready to become the new Hollywood sensation and would be one of the first acts to transition successfully from the silent film era into sound motion pictures. But Laurel and Hardy were about ready to bring in yet a new act. These two comedians, who in and of themselves were geniuses, were getting ready to add a co-star, and her name was Tin Lizzy. They incorporated the Model T as a co-star to their films, bringing life to what would normally be just another automobile. A gimmick Model T was used in Laurel and Hardy's 1928 silent hit titled, Two Tars. In that short film, Laurel and Hardy create havoc in a traffic jam and then escape in their Model T into a railroad tunnel. The resulting unseen collision with a train causes them to emerge in a roadster that's been squashed half its size and sideways, but still runs, of course. Genius. Nothing but genius. In one of the last great and funniest silent era films produced, the 1929 movie titled Big Business, Laurel and Hardy are selling Christmas trees out of the back of their worn-out Model T truck. 
When a cranky neighborhood resident rejects their sales pitch and damages the very Christmas tree that they are trying to sell, the comic pair takes it out on this man's house. The shocked homeowner immediately begins to inflict reciprocal destruction of their Model T truck. A police officer on the scene records what is happening and watches in disbelief as the owner dismantles the car literally piece by piece. Laurel and Hardy continue to trash the man's home as the neighbors watch in horror. Eventually, the homeowner reduces the vehicle to a nothing more than a pile of rubble by blowing up the car with a bomb. And as a side note, I often wonder just how someone conveniently had a bomb in their back pocket, but that's another story. By the time this film was produced, the Ford Model T was replaced two years earlier with the new Ford Model A, making the Model T pretty much obsolete. This also made the Model T quite affordable, especially for Hollywood to use as a vehicle that could be turned into a trash heap and still keep the overall film's production costs low. In the 1929 movie titled A Perfect Day, Laurel and Hardy's third talkie film, features several gags on board a Model T. When Ollie asks Stan to throw out the clutch, he reaches down and does just that. In the end, the car drives into a puddle that swallows the pair, their passengers, and their car. In the 1930 film titled Hog Wild, Hardy climbs a ladder mounted on Laurel's Model T to install a radio antenna, and Laurel accidentally drives off with Hardy still clinging to the ladder. In the finale, the car gets crushed between two streetcars like an accordion, and ironically, seems to run a little better for it. This car survived the scrapper's torch and was on display at the Car of the Stars Motor Museum in the English town of Keswick before the museum closed in 2011. The car is now part of the Miami Auto Museum's Cars and Stars collection. The comical genius of these two talented actors and their ability to use their best supporting actress, named Tin Lizzie, to their movie scores can still bring laughs to both young and old alike. Even my grandchildren find humor in movies that these two kings of gesture starred in a century ago. And I personally believe they will still bring smiles to people a century from now. I mean, just look at this half-bent car. If that isn't enough, look at how nonchalant Laurel and Hardy look driving it. It really is genius. Their legacy with a Ford Model T lives on even today. Christmas ornaments, scale model kits, and of course the films that they made still live even today. Museums are dedicated to what they've done. We truly owe our tip of the hat to these two geniuses for making the automobile popular even in today's films. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would enjoy hearing your thoughts. Feel free to post your comment below. Have a wonderful rest of your day and most of all, be blessed.